mine. And so the strategy didn't really have the oomph it was looking for. Well, Dred, I know you're going to be so excited because you can give some support insights because we're going to talk about Iacona and Akaface, the two supports of these teams. Takedown-wise, Akaface leading by nearly two takedowns per game, but also a few more deaths overall, and we have to take into account uh, their prioritized, their, their favorite heroes. And I think it is absolutely astounding we get to highlight these guys because both of them played very, very well in the last game. Akaface understanding with his Ancestrals which ones are the only way I can lose the game, using them very effectively left and right, a couple of cleanses that were just supreme, but then Iacona's palms. He was hitting very effective palms, you know, even beyond just pulse bomb hits. He, I saw, I believe he even hit two of them just purely off of raw team fighting. He had punch uh, and threat onto the back line. He was doing his job. And that, you know, very rarely do we get to see such proactive supports in a game like that. And it felt like both sides were really holding their own and kind of carrying the squad, especially Akaface. I cannot, that ancestral, I cannot tell you guys how well done that was. On and ATC. It, yeah, to the mm -hmm. fact that he was willing to go, I mean, this is like, in your head as a support, you just go, this is the only way they win the game. Like, this is their comeback. So you're like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to use an ancestral normally, but you're just kind of like, even if I take the next fight without my Ancestral, be, they're taking this because it's their only chance. So just stop it and go ahead. Even if it's not value, it's just like, oh, ETC's alive. And they wasted a cooldown. It is a winning trade, and he just perfectly played it. I think what's cool about highlighting both of these supports is they're both very flexible. Yeah. Akaface, we never know when he's going to bring in a Morales, a Brightwing. But then Iacona, he's only played one other Karazim game in all of Phase 2. And to come in and have such amazing uh, palms, yeah. she says a lot about both of those players. So I'm looking forward to some more stellar support play in the rest of the series. Game 2 will take place on Cursed Hollow. What do you think, Dredd? Got to be a little bit scary for Superstars here in the fact that already going down one game, but more importantly, just a large map. Superstars traditionally has prioritized some of those smaller maps, um, though in focus on their macro, their wave clear to be able to gain those upper hands. So going to Cursed, I would put it is not a bad map for Superstars, but Gale Force and Globals, they thrive here. It didn't look necessarily great on BOE, so it's got to be, you know, maybe a dark future here, but it all starts with the draft. Last time Gale Force played on Cursed Hollow, they did play the Vikings. We've seen more and more Vikings play from K1 Pro instead of Michael Udall for Gale Force. Superstars traditionally bans Cursed Hollow, so it is somewhat frightening that they now have to face Gale Force on one of their best battlegrounds. But Superstars are going to try to limit the power of Gale Force if they can, and that starts with an Illidan ban. And there's, a, you know, one other maybe silver lining for Superstars is they've got a really old roster for competitive players, right? And Cursed Hollow is like, honestly, it's like the first map everybody like was like, we're gonna know life, right? Hey, a lot of these guys spent a lot of time playing this when the map pool was much smaller, they have focus on it. So I have faith that though they don't Appreciate it, maybe comparative to our other maps in modern day, they'll be they'll be fine. They know how to work it. They know how to get those tributes. Yeah. How to pay tribute to the Raven Lord. And why does it take three? That's all I want to know. The best things come in three, right? Uh, you're probably right. Just Is that a true statement? It's either that or seven, and I feel like seven's just a bit too much. It's a few too many. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of tributes. Illidan and then Genji removed for Gale Force Esports. Here is a bit of a curious one. Genji ha is attended to, but not usually so high within a draft, especially with that melee assassin being prioritized here by superstars to go in that direction. So already, again, not overly stand out, but it's just curious where, where do we see Gale Force want to go here? Or do they have some kind of master cursed hollow plan? But superstars opens with the ETC, a very, you know, I say a beefcake on most warriors, but it's more fitting with him. He is, he is the true beefcake. Why do you say that, Dredd? I, you know, I just, I always think when I see ETC and he dies, I legitimately think of the old school brand, like beef, it's what's for dinner every single time. Like that is all I think of when I see of ETC. <laughs> we were playing a game this week and somebody said, where's ETC or where's ETC, something like that. And it just reminded me of that commercial, where's the beef? Yeah. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Which it turns out he's right here. He's, first he's on pick. Superstars. <laughs> Uh, Gale Force, you got anything? Does Fawcett make up? Uh, can we can we go with other like kind of his poultry? And he goes into like this chicken. No, avenue? you keep doing this. I wanna. You keep doing. He's this. not Fawcett a person. He's the bird. He's not the bird. That's Swift Beak. You're wrong. Okay, I don't <laughs> I know how to tell right. you this, but you're just wrong, Gilly. Tassadar Dahaka, bit 
a lot to say actually about this here for Gale Force. This has been a kind of awkward synergy that we've seen over and over again since post, I want to say it's MSB, might be Western Eastern Clash, mm -hmm. a bit more recent than that, but either way, <laughs> Those two together, oh man, look, look at that. Those two <laughs> together, they essentially, the Tassadar wants to enable a hyper carry that Dahaka is filling that role. So there's very few that shout towards the Tassadar other than a double support hybrid, which is again, has fallen a bit out of meta. It's just, where is Gale Force gonna go with this? Cause it does seem slightly out of place, but so does the Lost Vikings are you? Where's Guild Force gonna go with this? Where's Superstars going in with this? They already have ETC as a very good anchor. They have Zarya who can feel the heat, just take down structures quickly. They've got Vikings to soak the other two lands, so they're looking for a support and then a great sieging damage dealer as those last two picks for Superstars to give Guild Force kind of a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, they're gonna run that. Just a kind of four man all in siege composition, feel the heat while Vikings just get in that side soak. What are some things you got to be concerned about? Well, what stops you from sieging? Um, maybe a Chromie to be concerned, but with the draft already, I don't think it's a must go to. One that stands out to me is like the Falstead, right? For okay. that side soak. More importantly, for the disengage later on, if Vikings get to choose the fight that they want, they are a terrifying composition and type of hero to play against. But if they don't, and you get to remove that global in the other way, like it just, Superstars, if they ban this, I feel like it would be such a huge tool. And Gale Force, they're known for the globals. It's a double win here to be able to rid of that. Loving that gray main ban as the potential hero who was going to be sieging along with the Zarya. There's still maybe a potential of something like a Vala, but I almost expect Gale Force with Tassadar already to maybe go into fans Vala in their next couple of picks after seeing that gray main ban. But Superstars, you're feeling a global ban still? I, I just think that the false sad would provide so much towards the forgiveness of their style of play, right? They have already taken a high risk composition. Mm -hmm. You now need to look at what is the biggest strength of your composition and what are the things that work best with what your opponent plays traditionally mixed with minimizes what your composition is good at. And I do feel like false sad to me stands out at the highest priority on that list. I may be wrong, but if this is not Band towards considering the Vikings alone or the four man siege, I will be a bit concerned. Here. Yeah, something that's a Vikings hunter. And see, that's not a Vikings hunter, but I do think Kel'Thuzad is absolutely insane. So it's a little bit, I I'm torn on that one, right? I didn't get yeah. the boss that I was looking for, but also, you know, he can just. He's scary. He <laughs> likes to throw chains around and then things die. He's also very difficult to defend. And think about five man clumping. Mm. If Think okay, about how fast you get chains. Yeah, but you can. You can also use them as a way of making sure that they're the ones yeah. who are chained, right? So then your other heroes stay alive better? I don't know. I don't know what that would be like yeah. against. You know, it's the beauty of having a new hero here, especially one as crazy and diverse as Kelp <laughs> Zod. All right. Man, no Zod yet. No Zod. That, that's, what, that's what we're casually calling him, the especially Zod. Especially from Gale Force. When do we get some K1 Pro Zod? <laughs> some K1 Pro Zod. It is. That is his name. I kind of like we, it. We, I'm sorry, but we already have a KT. I see. I don't. Whether think it's like Kel'Thuzad is the real KT, Kel'Thas was first. I I agree with you. As a person who was a part of the discussion originally when Kel'Thas released, should he be nicknamed KT? With the question of eventually Kel'Thuzad could be released, is that fair? I was on the side of, yeah, give him KT. <laughs> there is only one. Let's stick with it. But, you know, I know there are a lot of tryhards at home that really appreciate the background, and they would be very offended that you say that. I get My apologies. I get those tweets a lot because, obviously, I'm the lore master, <laughs> and they want to – they empathize master, with me. Master, is that what we call yeah, it? Okay. Yeah. Morales and Vala. We Interesting. Do get fans Vala. The Morales. Yeah, but they got that, you know, Vala hyper carry that Superstars yes. was a bit concerned about before, so already a little bit scary. But they've got the Vikings. They're already – they're mixing things up themselves. But the Morales coming out here, it's the new Morales here. And I'm I'm ready to see how it plays out here with the Vala, the Hyper Carry, how they're going to be able to defend versus the Siege of Superstars. It looks like a good kind of, well, if you're going to push, we're going to push strategy, but I'm not sold on how Gale Force wants to play this out yet because I feel like the burden of execution still is on their shoulders right now. Well, it should be noted that this is not the Zod balance patch, which means that Morales does not have the buffs of the balance okay. patch too. Still takes three seconds after healing beam is off instead of the two seconds for her energy to start regenerating. We've got Lunara and Stukov as the final picks for superstars. That got wild. That did get wild. Lunara Stukov for the Siege composition. Neither provide too much on the actual Siege capability. Stukov with a little bit of zoning, wave clear is really dope. Um, he does make it hard to Siege against, but I don't feel like he'll be too big of a problem in that avenue. Ooh. And there's the last big Garrosh here for Gale Force. A lot of synergy shown between the Tassadar Garrosh, Tassadar Lieutenant Morales. Gale Force Esport got a lot of what they wanted. I think Gale Force 
Superstars in being the first pick position um, felt like they had to get Vikings before the secondary bans, and that put Galeforce in a great spot to negate some of the four-man siege of Superstars with that gray main ban and then the Vala picked follow-up there for Superstars into the Lunara, which they would have wanted more of the consistent, the, the straight up front damage that either Vala or Greymane could have provided. Yeah, and now it's suddenly kind of like how successful is this composition going to be for Superstars, right? And, I mean, it is already high risk. Gelforce has run it in the past. This is Gelforce map selection. I mean, I don't look at Gelforce's composition and go, this is immediately a direct counter to what I see on the other side of the table, but just with the strength Gelforce has kind of displayed, I mean, if we get the, you know, consistent version of Gelforce or maybe the positive side of the Gelforce coin that we've been experiencing, I do feel like it'll be pretty easy to deal with what Superstars built because they built like 75% of it and we're missing that 25%. And again, they didn't remove enough from Gelforce here, I feel. Galeforce, along with this Vala and Morales, this is something that we have seen on boss battlegrounds like Cursed Hollow too, and then they get the stem drone. Um, and then probably the Hungering Arrow build again, and Vala can just chunk through so fast the bosses, and that's another issue for superstars. If they can't get the control over lanes and then they start to lose bosses, then all of a sudden they're just playing cleanup instead of trying to get a big lead in all the lands of their Vikings. So let's see how the Vikings work in the hands of superstars this time. They're currently down at one game in this best of five to Gale Force Esports. And something to think about with that whole focus on to build Vala and the race to bosses being such a common thing developing within the North American and slightly within the international meta is the fact that that's not this isn't the first time that those type of strategies came to light. The original was when Taronda was starting to rise into the meta. You would bring old school Taronda plus one, a very good seizure like Butcher, and you kind of, you'd show everybody, you'd have somebody in every one of the lanes, but the Taronda Butcher alone can get that early kind of boss, stealth it in, and then go and try and be hyperactive elsewhere onto the map. And so I just find it kind of, it's almost a revamped edition of that play style, but now it's becoming core, right? Because so many elements, so many people can take out that boss so very quickly. And also, let's be real, just strategic teams are playing the map so very different than what that once was but I I find it kind of interesting we've gone full circle and it's yeah. coming back yeah it's kind of like fashion almost yeah. the trends that come back in it's got to be very cool to you to see um, new iterations on types of compositions or ideas of play styles for specific battlegrounds from ones that you used to yeah. play and now no, you're it casting is. it it is it is actually uh, it's really cool to be able to watch some of those unfold Trade down up below, though. Gale Force Esports pulling out slightly ahead for a smidge of a moment. Superstars, though, uh, let's break down here the Lost Vikings approach. What is their goal? It has got to be just grouping, staying together, and making sure that they can siege as effectively as nice. possible. That was really well done. Uh, to just pressure out these front walls while those Vikings are getting their sights. So Gale Force is using the three man to defend as best as they can, and then using that Tassadar to hawk a wave clear to essentially say, you know what, your Vikings aren't real heroes, right? I mean, I hate to break it to you, Vikings. You're just, you're one third of a hero, and that they can out siege, out pressure, and they're going to essentially win two lanes while Superstars barely wins one. Yeah, the struggle is real for what Superstars want to do, and now there's the first of probably many pulls from King Caffeine's Garrosh. He finds ETC and throws him behind the wall. And besides the fact of how Galeforce were able to manipulate the Siege hero for Superstars, not having Greymane, not giving them Vala, forcing Yoda into a Lunara, getting Garrosh is just so terrifying. Until those towers are drained of ammo, something like that is a guaranteed kill, which is guaranteed stopping what Superstars want to be doing with this composition. So the drafting of Galeforce, very good in responding to what Superstars were trying to do with this draft. And that's kind of that note onto the false set that I had before, at least looking towards the things to be able to stop it, right? I thought it was the false set. Now looking at it, Gale Force is putting up a way better argument for the Garrosh and the defensiveness. And also the Kel'Thuzad. We talked about how that synergy could play out here. Urho takes a bit of damage, though, able to get the minion to tank that fort damage for him. Luckily, he's able to make it just on out here. But Gale Force Esports, they are stopping this pressure. This is not according to plan so much for Superstars, but I think it would be unfair to say Superstars isn't at least getting something done here in the bottom lane. Yeah, and especially because Eric was in the top lane. Dahaka takes him down, now forcing Olaf up, giving some time for free siege, free push for Dahaka, for Michael Udall, and we've got a level lead for Gale Force against the Vikings. It's cool that Superstars wanted to play this Viking style on Cursed, but they're kind of playing it versus the masters of the Viking style in North America, right? Yeah, when things like this keep going down too, it just doesn't look like it. Scale Force Esports has anything to really worry about in this game. They find a kill onto one of the Vikings elsewhere, and then they get themselves in a position to pick themselves up a tribute. And above all else, Vikings, 
weren't even soaking all three of the lanes after that kill because Dahaka got the pick, so Dahaka has found himself in a situation where he was winning and soak. Gelfort just picked up a tribute, two kills, and had soak in all three lanes. That is absolutely unacceptable when you run a Vikings composition. Like, you just cannot say that these things are true and then expect to be able to win this game. And so now Superstars, they've got to find a way to stop it. They need to turn this around. Or Guild Force Esports, that boss threat you were talking about, the race that they're going to have, they have prepped this top lane to be Boss City, and they will just throw them at you left and right. Yeah, and top lane is the place you want Boss City to be on when you're the red team, because it's your safer boss. You force your opponents to defend it by running all the way over onto your side of the battleground, and you can chase them down all the way back to their structures. And with Avala, who could chase pretty well, that's oh. very nice. That silence was great. It's a great start. That's going to be enough. To come back. That's going to be enough. They do end up getting that kill, so very well done, Superstars. I mean, experience still out of the realm, but if they get this tribute on top, maybe lose or stop losing some of these Vikings here and there on the side of the map, I do think that it, this is the area where they can, you know, stabilize what has happened so far through this game. But if they struggle here, I don't know if it's going to be something that they can handle. Indomitable use there for Cap. Looks like he's fine. He is fine. Morales channeling tribute. Unfortunately for Superstars, this positioning is nice for Gale Force to channel this. And because of the deficit and experience for Superstars, things are going to be a lot m worse when Gale Force are looking at the next tribute because of heroic abilities. But Superstars are trying at least to take out this fort in the bottom and stabilize slightly. And Viking Bribery has sneakily taken some of the giants from Gale Force side of the battleground. Gilly, I do want to highlight, too, that there is a very big difference here. Hold up here. Up on top. Nice silence. Cap throws out one W. Good throw away. I mean, he's a Garrosh. I don't know why. I see low HP, and I think he's vulnerable, but it's never the case. Now K1 Pro comes out on a Dahaka. He lands the drag. Heals are there. Power Slide able to connect just on the K1 Pro, but Fan moving up on that Vol up, using that hot pursuit. And K1 Pro gets put into a place for a drag. <laughs> Stray is not going anywhere except right back in the same position. He goes down for another kill. Gale Force Esports, four kills to one. And so the one thing that I did want to touch up on on that difference was, in fact, that major, you know, the Zarya level one. We talked about the field of heat that we assum assumed that that was going to come in here. Uh, and that, that essentially removes a lot of the early game pressure that we expected to see from Superstars. So it's just kind of another case where it feels like Superstars, they went in with that, again, we got rid of the Vikings, but maybe not necessarily doing all the homework needed for this style of play, or at least they're different approach is very much not necessarily looking like it's working out. Yeah, I saw Demolitions Expert and I was like, I'm just going to wait and Until see Dread decides how, to long, go, Where's the heat? how long Dread I can noted, go without talking about this talent. I noted and I made it five <laughs> minutes. I think that's about five I minutes longer. I am so proud of you. Was it as soon as it's picked up? Insta-tilt. No, I, I decided I'd give it a chance because the laning situation here was different. They have a Stukov Lunara. We talked about that. That wasn't according yeah. to the game plan. So maybe I was missing something here, right? The laning situation here for Sarai and the members of Superstars, but it quickly turned out that I don't think that was the case. And now we got to talk about it. What do we have here? That's yes. the Decimate. A boss sneak. The good old Decimate picked up here, Gilly. Wow. Gilly. That Whoa. is the first Decimate. So you I... You want to talk about it? You go ahead. I mean, I, I like Decimate. Honestly, at first glance, I I've been surprised at how little we've seen it. I didn't think that this would be the game and the case where we do see it as an outlier, but against heavy melee style of play, right? I, I mean, Decimate does have that value. Most people are like, yeah, but the taunt's so very, very good. But I'm just saying, what if you need him to fill that DPS role? I thought we'll see what Calf makes happen here. If this is just pure confidence because the Vikings, not quite sure, but they're going to have to display confidence as Yoda leaping strike onto Akaface, trading rather well there. Expulsion zone thrown over the wall. Stage dive on in. And Akaface is out. The boss is there, still doing some damage to the structures of Gale Force Esports, but Superstars does force Gale Force back. Tribute starting to be channeled by Srey, and with so many bodies of Superstars all here, they will make sure that Gale Force does not get a curse, at least not yet. So how many decimates does it take to kill the Lost Vikings? That's the real question I'm asking. How many how many decimates can Eric actually stand? Well, remember that whenever it hits heroes, it reduces the cooldown by a second. That's and you've what got I'm the saying. three charges. He's just gonna go ahead and just He's just gonna be decimate. It's basically Dark Swarm. Yeah, I mean, he just it really goes is. in there and has them all going. It's gonna be helicopter Garrosh right there, just spinning it around left and right. Things are gonna turn into a chopper. Calf, though, he sniffs out the boss. Yeah, he's helicoptered over to this boss. Yeah, he has. The members of Gale Force, they look like they're hovering down, too. How many helicopter puns can we put in? Is that all you got? What about uh, a rover? Woo! 
I don't know. <laughs> Fun police stop superstars. Police use helicopters, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> they do, Gilly. Eric, he was caught out. The bus was stopped, so Gale Force Esports in the you know, the scouting that they have tried to make happen has very much paid off for them, and that's all they needed. They were just trying to scare them off, gain this 13 talent here, and have used that experience advantage to kind of launch into this next curse and disable uh, the members of Superstars. Superstars, though, one thing they got going for them, they got globals. They kind of, right? They're, the Vikings, in a sense, as long as they don't die, they can act kind of as that global a smidge, and they can stop a lot of the lost experience you often endure during a tribute a curse like this. But they've also been losing the Vikings left and right, and I'm concerned that maybe that's not something we can rely on them, and I think they're going to need that here if they do not end up picking up this curse. Decimate number one used. Curse point for both teams. Vikings have not showed their Viking faces, but Hosty is here and ready if he wants to play again around the side. Starting to check and see if they have a possible Aka face flank to pull back all he's the members wide. of Guildford. Yeah, he's going really, he's gonna take the vision, just letting them know what's up. We've got the Vikings in the back. You should be scared. Yeah, Eric's just letting you guys know he's going to play again. There it is. They're going to go. Stage dive two. Yoda using Leaping Strike. It's all focused. Morales all day, and they get her. And they found her. K1 Pro is the next to be focused down, but look at the damage on to Superstars here. They are so very low. Good healing coming out from Iacona. He pops the passive, but Sray is the man to go down. Flip on Urho, but he's got a power slide. Yoda, he's just using that gallop. He makes it away. Good drag from Caffeine, but Seems a bit too late here. Superstars only lose Sray, but they do potentially lose this curse. Yeah, the health bars are so low after oh. the decimate, after the multi shots, the area damage with psionic storms, even dark swarm. Lunara goes down next. Superstars desperate to get this curse. They might have done it. They do get the curse, but at what cost? At what cost? The Lunara tried to go for a two versus one trade with Stukov there into Fan, leapt into the turret range, got the auto attack debuff, and that allowed Fan to actually trade into them, then causing this tribute to be picked up. Yes. But is it worth, Superstars? You're now down that Lunara, that sieging. You don't have the field to heat to maybe apply the pressure, and the first thing they're doing is backing out and going to the boss, Gilly. And we, throughout all of Competitive Heroes of the Storm, we know anytime you return to a boss, the minute you get a curse, you're essentially just wasting that curse. So three tributes here kind of out the window for superstars. So they're gonna have to make up for it with the boss somehow, some way. Kill Force making sure to soak up all of the minions that they can. Now King Caffeine starting to come in. Dahaka up in the top lane, but he is ready to stalk. All of the members of Superstars make sure that they can get the boss. Aquaface has been found again. Reign of Vengeance cannot save Lieutenant Morales, so it's now once again up to Guildforce Esports just to try to get kills even after Aquaface goes down. But Superstars, they're able to figure out a way to get on top of Morales, and it goes down to the Leaping Strike of Yoda and the Vikings flank. And those two kills now with the boss pushing through bottom and top giants. Guildforce, they answered and they failed, which suddenly made that very risky decision making to superstars profitable this is a prime situation we might even see superstars find themselves getting this very first keep of the game this is brilliant here and so very convenient that they were able to get those kills it gotta give credit to superstars to just the amount of focus they're able to apply there to Akaface. he is really regretting maybe not you know going a bit more defensive here. Yeah, they're even gonna back off because they know that the boss should be able to finish off the port but there are tasks that are shield even still, it does get it. Superstars on their way out would like to keep the pressure going by taking the Giants from Gale Force side of the battleground. And the whole time, Superstars had Vikings in every single lane. Only one fort left for Gale Force Esports. Two keeps. The Viking in every lane. The rotation from Superstars using 16 to their advantage to take down that final fort. And we're in a situation where suddenly the Vikings, normally they struggle with that team fight 10 into 16, but they got the 16. Olaf is ready to come in here, drop a big old stun and establish dominance on his territory. That's what Olaf does best, you know? He's large and in charge. 16 is the window that Vikings do go to team fight strategy when you play, play again. Not so much with Longboat Raid, that's a very different Vikings build. But suddenly Superstars has a team fight advantage as well, or at least a team fight even footing, which is great to be able to claim for themselves after getting that key. All right, so the team fight for Superstars has been Focus Morales. What can Guildforce do to keep Morales alive? Extended Care is going to help a lot. Now she has the 40% increased range on her healing beam. That'll probably be able to help. 
Uh, Vala, not sure what she's gonna get here, but maybe Frost Shot is a way of slowing people who get on top of her Morales. Well, the biggest problem is ETC. ETC has the opportunity to get a stage dive immediately yes. after, and they need to avoid the power slide after the stage dive. That is the kind of thing really sealing the deal here for Superstars. I think that goes down to Dahaka mainly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be onto Dahaka, or it would be on a King Caffeine with Taunt because he went into Decimate, or maybe it is on King Caffeine, but he's trying to for force those fights because he has into the fray. Like, right. somebody somebody has to baby Akka. One of those two, baby Akka face. If it's King Caffeine, make sure that he's going to be in the position that he just throws Airhole yeah. immediately after he stage dives because he's going to stage dive and probably be the only one uh, in flank. position, in the closest. There's the flank again, Aka face all the way back, but this time the separation's pretty good and the Vikings have to go back. But They'll Caff just turn on King Caffeine instead. He's gonna throw down to Decimate. Tacitar shields are there. The healing is real. K1 Pro on the other side of the force wall, but Cap is the first to fall. Superstars get the kill. There is a huge heal coming out from K1 Pro. Stage dive drop. The ping is there. Power slide not going to be used, but Gale Force Esports is just running. They have lost themselves, Garrosh. There is no hope and fans next to fall. Superstars. They're coming back. Yeah, they, the one fight we saw of Superstars where they were having trouble with all the area damage, just seems like not an issue anymore. Uh, Stukov being able to keep them alive a lot more. They knew they were going to be grouping. They were going to have a lot of bodies. Um, Pox Populi even chosen for Iacona so that you can keep healing Pathogen on longer. They're staying very healthy between that, the shields of Zarya. Looking good for Superstars to tie up the series versus Gale Force. Yeah, they are doing absolutely amazing. And I just, I, I think I'm so astounded, not so much that Superstars is winning this game, because to be honest, I felt like we might be going to game number five with the results that these teams have had as of late. But the biggest thing is just, they had a Vikings comp that was down an entire level pre-10. They yes. held their own. They were not winning or losing the early game in maybe a fashion that you could project, but they somehow kept it together kept the mentality together, and now they find themselves with the level lead and the boss. Flip is thrown onto Yoda. He leaping strikes out. This keep is going to go down. The question is, how much more beyond that here for Superstars do they get? The Expulsion Zone placements, whenever Superstar Siege have been great to give them lots of time to get damage on the keep, and then just exit. As soon as it's done, they don't want to deal with the Force Walls. They don't want to deal with King Caffeine on their retreat. So they leave the boss, and every time they've left the boss, they know exactly how much damage it's going to do, even taking into account Tassadar's shield so that they can make sure and get the keeps. Two keeps down for Gale Force Esports. Superstar's in a tough position, though. They are now primed to be a 20 advantage team and take that team fight very, very confidently over their opponents. But do you want to risk giving them this curse and having that three-quarter level advantage where everything's disabled and they can go in? They're going to say no. Stage Dive immediately dropped. A lot of damage already there on to Garrosh as he uses Indomitable. There's the drag. Power Drag's Slide. Hits. Power Slide. Expulsion Zone is great. King Caffeine can't stay alive with all this damage. The grenades, one after another, ripping through Gale Force Esports. Two taken down already. Reign of Vengeance just to let Gale Force Esports attempt to escape, but Dahaka has been captured in the corner with this boss. Three kills for Superstars, only losing a Viking. And Superstars just landed right on top of that boss. They all started immediately here, and they are going to march with a 20 advantage. Three catapults already on the core of Gale Force Esports, a 16-minute boss. This very much could be game. Gale Force, they understand. They try and move up. But Yoda is not going to let Fan do that. He is quick work there. And it looks like this is game. Gale Force has just got to find a way. How can they stop this boss? This pressure. You got it. It just doesn't feel like it's possible. Catapults on core. Morales and Garrosh. And in eight seconds to Haka as the defense against Superstars tying up this series one to one. A boss. And all of Superstars walking toward the core of Gale Force Esports with a 20 advantage. Sray moves up, throws out a couple grenades there. Shielding's already gone before the boss is even here to join. Keep in mind that there's a boss behind Superstars there. 80%, the top ca giants are there. That is all she wrote. Superstars did it. We find ourselves going to game three on even footing. And remember, Superstars just defeated Gale Force on a battleground that typically Superstars ban because they don't want to play against opponents on it, but they felt they needed to ban Braxis Holdout with a style of composition that generally you want to get the early lead with, with the Vikings and their opponents know how to play against and had a lot of great drafting counters throughout the draft. Superstars Gilly. did a great job that series, so or that game. 
freaking fr fantastic job. They did. They absolutely did. And I don't mean to take anything away. I'm just wondering, what can I conclude after now knowing all those things? Because I feel like we started this off kind of going, hey, it could be a bit of a coin toss. In game number one, it was like, mm, maybe not. Superstars here not looking too hot. But then we see the second one. They're doing things that we are just uncharacteristically good. And it's just kind of like, it's not like Gale Force is, you know, messing up. It's just plays being made here by superstars and so suddenly it's kind of like well what does that mean for the series who knows is what i feel like it ain't over until the fat lady sings nope. we're going to a commercial but when we come back we'll have game three the two teams tied up